things this morning. Roberta, did you have something you wanted to share? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm still responding. stand and go with the Lord this morning. Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning, Lord. We gather together in this cold Sunday morning. We gather together to lift you up, Lord, to lay our burdens at your feet, Lord. To speak of praises, Lord, of your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you brought us through to this place, Lord. We thank you for the victories that you have given for us, Lord. Lord, we lay these obstacles at your feet, Lord, that you said that these high mountains, if we speak to them, will be laid low. Jesus, that nothing is impossible for you, Lord, that by power, not by power, not by might, but by your spirit, these things come to pass, Lord. Lord, we thank you that through your cross, Lord, it is finished, that our hope and our trust are in you and in you alone. That you're revealing the path before us, Lord. Continue to illuminate the path before us as we walk, as we follow after you, Lord. Lead us and guide us in wisdom and revelation. Lead us and guide us in love and peace and joy in your Holy Ghost. Let us stir up the Lord. gifts, Lord. Let us stir up the gifts within Lord. each and every member of this body, Lord. Let this body function. Let this body find its purpose and its place, Lord, and walk boldly to bring the kingdom to earth, on earth, Lord, as it is in heaven. Give us boldness to speak words of life, to light up the darkness, Lord, everywhere we go. To light up the darkness, Lord, everywhere we go. Lord, that you are opening doors that no man can shut. Let us boldly enter in and go forth into the new and to the unknown. For we know that you are with us, that you go before us and you make the way, Lord. Oh, we trust you, Lord. We love you, Lord. It is our pleasure to serve you and to follow you. Hallelujah. You are welcome. 
welcome here this morning, Holy Spirit. Come and minister to your people as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. That you stir up the gifts in this place, that you breathe that very yes, breath Lord. of life. Stir Fan up, the flames of the hunger and the thirst of your Lord, people, Jesus. Lord. As we follow after you, Lord, yes, we will Lord. not be silent. We will not be quiet, Lord. Stir up the hunger and the thirst for more of you. Let us not be satisfied, for you have more. You have more for us. Lord, as the world looks back on 2015, and as they make resolutions for 2016, bring the hurting, bring the lost, bring the weary, Lord, that they might be filled that they might know love, unconditional, unending, unfailing love in the face and in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, that you are our only hope. Oh, but you are so much more. You are so much more than we could ever ask. You are the answer to every situation, Lord. Give us wisdom to see with your eyes. Give us wisdom to hear with your ears. Light up the way, Lord. Let your word come alive and let us speak your word. Fully convinced that it will not come back void, that it must accomplish that which you sent it to do. Lord, it is our one desire to see the kingdom of God released earth as it is in heaven. Show us the way, Lord. Show us the way. Let all of us decrease so that you may increase. Let us turn our eyes to you. Let us turn our ears to you, Lord. Let us search. Let us search out the truths that have been hidden from us, Lord. And let us love like never before. Let us pour out our lives as a love offering to whosoever will, Lord, the people that you bring into our lives, the people that you have purposed to come into our lives. Nothing is coincidence in you, Lord. Just as Roberto was speaking, you make all things new. You make all things new. Let us let go of the old, Lord, and let us look to the new. Make us new. Make our hearts new again. We trust you, and we love you. May you be lifted high in this place. May your name, Jesus, be lifted high and be forever on our lips. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Welcome. Good to see some new faces this morning. So I want to say welcome to everybody who we uh, haven't seen before, that we haven't seen for a little while. You are welcome here. Let's speak the word this morning. Will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? Yes, Lord. I am a believer, and these signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ and every tissue of this body functions to the perfection to which God created to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. The Lord rebukes the devourer for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial 
prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Don and Toby, would you two like to come take the offering this morning, please? Don, you want to ask a blessing, please? Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here today, Lord. We just praise you for your many blessings. We just ask that you will bless this offering. Bless all those who ventured out today. And bless those that didn't have the courage to venture out today. <laughs> we just praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the worship team comes forth. I, I really, really appreciate their heart, um, them coming out Friday night and those that did come Friday night. We had a, a very special time. Uh, glad to see Sister Jody back from uh, her situation in Iowa City. Yep. All went well? Yep. All Hallelujah. Well. Hallelujah. Uh, pray for Tammy. Uh, she was having back spasms all night. Um, Peter is still stuck at work. Um, they dumped a bunch of stuff on him, so he needs to get freed up. Ma uh, Myron's battery is dead in his, his uh, vehicle, so I was hoping he was closer to here so I could jumpstart him or something, but he's clear out on the west side. I'll, find, I'll take care of that a little later. So, <coughs> Anyway, um, I saw that. Did you bring out those other two stools? I did. Mm -hmm. You brought in the other two stools? Yeah. That's confirmation. I'm still looking for two more vocalists. I know Peter and Tammy aren't here this morning, but there are two more vocalists that I know, I know the Lord is drawing in. So pray, and these prayers will be answered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get your praise on, church.
magnify, we magnify. We exalt your name together, so we glorify, magnify the way. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are great and greatly to be praised. You are great.
been posting this icon for the last three weeks, I believe. This is a manifestation of what the Lord has done in this place over the last few months. Um, this song was birthed in this place. The prayers of all of you, the worship of all of you, the seeking after God of The door is open. His river is flowing in this place. We are, have seen miracles. We have seen restoration. We have seen evidences, even in the testimonies, even here this morning, of God and his grace and his mercy. <clears throat> we have the river of life within us. And the Lord desires to flow from our innermost being out to this lost world. Not rain of hail and brimstone and fire, but of his love. As described in this place, the oil that flows, the oil that's on fire for the passion that the Lord has for his people. Those that don't know him, that he desires to come to him. That the oil would flow from us into those people that need him and him alone. Not religion, not doctrine, not the old ways of man, but just him and his love and his grace and his mercy and trusting and believing in his finished work.
watches over me to set the nations in the sin of your futility. Hear the singing voices on the mountain of the Lord. Let your voice be heard. It washes over me. It washes over me. Washes over me. in this place, Lord. Time fades and days go by. Earthquakes and buildings falling from the sky. And yet a new day breaks and still another reason why. To live. We are the generation who will stand and fight in the midst of all the darkness. We carry the light. We are the generation who will stand and fight. In the midst of all the darkness, we carry the light. We'll carry the light inside. We'll carry the light inside. Fire. 
fathers fail and children hide hearts are broken from the hurt they have inside and yet a new day breaks and still another reason why carry the light. Yes, Lord, we are the generation who will stand and fight. In the midst of all the darkness, we'll carry the light. can't be bended by the power of God's own hand and it's a new day now it's time for the saints to shine. shine we are the generation who will stand and fight in the midst of all the darkness we we'll carry the light. We are the generation who will stand and fight. In the midst of all the darkness, we'll carry the light. We'll carry the light of the world. We'll carry the In the midst of all the darkness, we'll carry the light. We are the generation who will stand and fight. In the midst of all the darkness, we'll carry the light. Carry the light.
seated. Amen. Thank you, Mike and worship team. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Okay, if there's any kids, they can go downstairs now. If they haven't already bailed on us, praise the Lord. They certainly may. But I'm watching for any adults to try to make it to the back door. because We do have monitors. Praise the Lord. God is good. Hallelujah. Thank you all for coming out and braving the cold. I don't care every year. It's like a goose in a snowstorm. I wake up in a new world every winter. Praise the Lord. I just have to learn how to deal with it all over again. Praise God. I'm sick of it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> well, not to be too negative, but world's a negative place. Even the Miss America, well actually the Miss Universe pageant is fixed. <laughs> yeah, Miss Universe pageant is fixed. Every winner has been from Earth. <laughs> ah, okay, where's James when I need him? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. He's always in a good mood. Praise the Lord. We should be as well. Praise the Lord. Anybody's eyes on Mike here for a moment? <laughs> oh, praise God. You know, I learned a long time ago, <coughs> babies come from storks. But I'm just curious about those really heavy babies. Do they come from cranes? <laughs> I'm working out some new material in case this doesn't work. I gotta have a backup plan, praise the Lord. All right, let's move on, hallelujah. Thank you, Roberto. There's the sound of one hand clapping back there, praise the Lord. <laughs> let's start this morning with Romans chapter four, uh, verses eight and nine. I'm going to go to about three different places here, uh, Roberto, so just hang in here with me for a moment. But we'll start with Romans chapter 4, <coughs> verses 8 and 9. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. Praise the Lord. All right, uh, 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. So are, as he is right now, so are we here in this world. Praise the Lord. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 and 5. You know, if you, when you read the Bible, if it doesn't take faith to believe it, then you're reading it wrong. This is not something you can do. It's something you have to believe. It, it, 
it just doesn't work out when we try to rationalize things and religiousize it to a point where we think we actually can do some of these things. It's Christ in us. Yeah. Amen? For though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. For we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except you be reprobates. Praise the Lord. All right, so when you think of these uh, verses, and we'll try to, if you can, try to keep them in your mind. But I want to go back uh, to where this begins with Abram. And Abram was given a promise from God. And because he believed God, God called that righteous. He said, you are righteous because you believed me. That's all he did. Because Abram really was a screw up in a lot of ways. And if you read much of the history, he's a lot like us. He just, God gave him a promise and then he kind of tries to make the promise happen and meanders around and gets all carnal and everything and screws everything up and gets an Ishmael. Now God had promised him a son, but God promised him a son miraculously, not through any normal means by which he could do this. And so God says, Abram, I'm going to rename you. I'm going to call you Abraham, father of many, or father of many nations. Amen. So uh, Abram believed that. Now, he would, his belief wasn't perfect because otherwise he wouldn't have went back into Egypt. He wouldn't have tried to you know, sell his wife to the uh, Pharaoh's harem or whatever. And, uh, and he would have gone and taken the bond servant and, and uh, had intercourse in order to have a child. Uh, he would have trusted God. But he believed God enough, based on the scripture, that God called him righteous. So any of you out here that feel like my faith isn't perfect, it's okay. Trust God. Amen? Believe God. All right? Then along comes his legitimate son, or the son that God promised, which was Isaac. And let's go to uh, Jeremiah 2, uh, verse 13. Just for a minute, I'm just trying to set something up here, if I can. Praise the Lord. Jeremiah 2. And verse 13. Well, my people have committed two evils. They've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Now, there's, in the story of Isaac, I know this doesn't relate directly to him, although it, it, it does in a way. Because God says, here's the problem with my people. They have not trusted me, the fountain of living waters, and they've gone and tried to dig up their own water. The scripture says that uh, Isaac, there isn't as much information about Isaac probably as there is Abraham and Jacob. There is, but it's more about him getting a wife and so on and so forth. But the Bible teaches us that he had to dig his own well. Abram had dug wells, provided for the cattle and the sheep and so on and so forth. But others, enemies of his, came and filled those in. And, and so Isaac, it says, Redug those wells. He went back and had to dig those wells himself. He was trying to provide, spiritually speaking, the metaphor here is, is given to us in Jeremiah, that he was trying to make things happen himself. Whereas his father just had faith in God, just believed God, imperfectly as it was, but he believed God and God called him righteous. Well, now he had a covenant with Abram that hit all of his seed after him, right? If they believed. So there's a process through which Isaac had to become a believer, a truster in God, just as his father had been, right? All right, then we go on to uh, <laughs> Jacob, the, the, the grandson of Abram, Isaac's son, amen. And the Bible says he was a deceiver. He manipulated. He tried to control stuff, even though God had declared him before birth that he was the one who would carry the promise. He was the one that would carry the covenant. But, and he knew that based on what his father and family had told him, and yet he still tried to manipulate everybody and everything, created all kinds of problems for him, okay? But God called him Israel, which literally translates prince with power or prince of power with God. So he had the ability to move God or to get God to respond, amen? All right, now let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. I don't want to read, uh, beginning at verse 8, read 
8 through 10. Hebrews 11, 8 through 10. Bear with me here. I'll have to get out my jokes again. Right before. <laughs> By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We are not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're looking for a kingdom. Right. Amen. Whose builder and maker is God. Right. Now we're here, and we don't really know what's going on. We're just here kind of trying to make our way through this thing by the help, with the help of God. But, but we recognize we're never going to be totally comfortable here. So when you, you know, elections coming up and everything, no matter who gets elected, believe me, you won't be completely satisfied. Whatever the government does, it'll never be what it ought to be. It's, it's all corrupted, praise the Lord. Just ask Bernie Sanders, praise the Lord. I'm just saying it is because it's run by humans. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying it's because of one party or another party. I'm just saying it, it just is. So we're never going to be totally, it's not going to be like uh, church everywhere we go. It just, it just won't be, amen? So they, they were dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with, uh, with him of the same promise, amen? For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Okay, jump down to verse 20 and 21. Same chapter, but verse 20 and 21. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshiped, leaning upon the top of his staff. So they believed God. <coughs> Eventually, they got to the place where they believed the same promise that God had given to Isaac's father and Jacob's grandfather, and they passed that on down. By faith, they released that, <coughs> that same blessing, that, uh, the acknowledgement of that covenant that they had with God. Amen? So to, to experience manifestation, this goes back to what I was talking about Wednesday night when we talked about revival. We're always looking forward to something happening, something tangible that we can see, then we can say, okay, that's revival. Well, the truth is revival is in us. We have Christ in us, the hope of glory. He is revival. He is the life, amen, and the light of life. And so we have that available. It's just that we're not, you know, we're, we're not conscious all the time because we're looking for that city, but we are still dealing with this natural realm, amen. So to, to experience manifestation, these three and everyone after them had to see themselves as God saw them. Abram had to see himself as Abraham. He had to see himself as the father of many nations. Amen. Isaac had to see himself as an heir of that promise. Jacob had to see himself as Israel, a prince that had power with God. He had to see himself that way so that he wasn't manipulating and cheating and, and, and doing all those things. He had to, at some point, come to a realization that that reality was his reality. Amen. They had to see themselves as God saw them. They had to see themselves as God had declared them to be. Amen? Yes. And the result of what God declared was this covenant. Okay? This is key for us today. Everything in here was written not just for them, but for our benefit. For us to gain, for us to understand, for us to, to realize. God, God hasn't changed. He still operates the same. It's our misconception many times that causes us the problem. So whatever unrighteousness uh, you see in, in church is mainly deficient grace. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Unrighteousness is the result of legalism. Look, when temptation comes, and I'm not just talking about being tempted to go get drunk or to you know, commit adultery or something. I'm talking about temptation, like the temptation to not believe God. Yeah. Believe me, Abraham was tempted, and he succumbed to those temptations, or he wouldn't have taken the, the bond servant. He wouldn't have gone off into Egypt. You know, it's true of all of these people. Right. Right. They come to a place where there's a temptation. Temptation will come, and the temptation, the real temptation, is not to get you to do something stupid, but to get you to not believe God, which is the dumbest thing anybody can do. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. So, when temptation comes, 
your sanctification or your holiness or your separation to God, which is what we all have as believers, amen, whenever temptation comes, sanctification is only going to be as strong as your justification feels real to you. Oh, it's kind of long, but do you understand what I'm saying? When temptation to, try, to doubt God, that he wants you blessed, that he wants you prospered, that he wants you healed and whole, delivered, amen. When temptation comes to doubt that, when the bill comes in the mail or the pain or the whatever it might be that, that brings the, you know, the temptation to say, I don't think God's <coughs> going to really do this or I don't, maybe I don't understand God. God's not going to be everything to me that he has been. The, the, the ability to resist that temptation is only as strong as your justification feels real to you. In other words, if you're not positive of your justification, if you've been justified as far as God's concerned, then temptation comes and you will succumb to the temptation because you're not sure that God's going to really take care of you because you're not as good as somebody else. You, have, you didn't do everything perfectly this week, right? You got mad, you swore, you, 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 you did something stupid, whatever it might have been. Right? Yep. And temptation comes to then doubt God. Yeah. He's not going to heal me because yep. I've been bad. Right? Yeah. Or he's not going to use me to see somebody else healed because I haven't been perfect. Yeah. You understand? So you see what I'm saying? Yes. Temptation, the only inroad temptation has is a lack of your understanding of your justification. Yeah. If you really understand your justification, temptation isn't a problem anymore. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Let's look at this. See, the only faith you need, we don't, you don't need faith for healing. You don't need faith for prosperity. We, we, we want to dissect everything and, and divide it all up and say, okay, we have healing ministries. So somebody has great faith for healing. It's, that, it's bogus. I'm not saying people haven't had success that way, but I'm just saying the only faith you need is faith in Christ. You don't have to have special faith for healing. You don't have to have special faith for prosperity. You just got to believe Jesus. You just got to believe in Christ. The only faith you have to have is faith in him. We major so much on, on individual, you know, little rabbit trails in our lives that we miss what it is we're supposed to be focused on. Right. Have faith in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 5, uh, verse 19 and 20. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Praise the Lord. So wherever righteousness emerges from human effort, from our religious strength or abilities or what have you, wherever it's a, a work of the flesh, wherever it's righteousness by scruples or by rules or by regulations, it's bogus. It's self-righteousness. Right. It's no longer God now declaring you righteous. It's you trying to perform, amen, for favor, amen, to be righteous. Praise the Lord. All right, Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. So the real deal can only thrive in the overflow of grace. What God really wants to do can only happen by grace. You're not, you can't pray enough, you can't fast enough, you can't read enough, you can't be good enough for righteousness. It is a gift of grace. Praise the Lord. Now, again, sanctification only flows out of our oneness with Christ. <coughs> the only way you are really sanctified is by your oneness with Christ. The exact moment that you were, that you were saved, that you accepted Christ, that you had salvation, amen, God joined you to Christ. It's not a process. It's not something you're working on to happen. It has happened. When you believe, you became one, amen, with God. He super glued you to Jesus. You cannot be separated. Praise the Lord. You become one with him. You're no longer two. 
You're one. There's no distinction in the eyes of God between you and Christ. You are one. Amen. The scripture calls this being in Christ. Amen. Or being in him. Praise the Lord. You have been so united to Christ that everything that is true of Jesus Christ in his humanity before God, as God saw him as a man, everything that is true of Jesus in his humanity has now become true of you. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord because this isn't what you're doing, it's what he has done. Praise the Lord. So every, every part, amen, every part of him, as we are united to him, Everything that's true of Jesus is true of you. I'm talking about everything that was of his humanity before God. I'm not talking about the God that existed before the creation of the earth. You know, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. I'm not talking about what he was doing in heaven. I'm talking about everything about his nature before God as a human. You are exactly the same. Amen. Praise the Lord. His history is your history. Now look at this in Romans chapter 6, Romans 6, verses 1 through 5. Whatever he is, you are. Hallelujah. I'm talking in our humanity, Jesus came here robed in flesh. Yep. What he was in that flesh before God is exactly what you are before God. How can it be otherwise if you and he are one? On. Your history is his history. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Four and five. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. See, his history is our history. We are one. God sees us as one. Praise the Lord. Amen. His destiny is our destiny. Colossians chapter 3 verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Praise the Lord. His destiny is your destiny. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. How can we not be like him if we're one? This is, this is fundamental theology, amen, from the Bible. Why, I don't know. We haven't really, you know, majored on this is beyond me. But it's a reality. We are one. His histories, our history. His destinies, our destiny. Amen. Praise the Lord. His possessions are our possessions. Yes. Ephesians chapter 2, <coughs> verse 7. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 8. Unto, him, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. Amen. Ephesians 1 11. in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Praise the Lord. His possessions are your possessions. You are joint heirs with Christ. Praise God. His status is yours. He's royal. You're royal. We are a nation of kings and priests. Hallelujah. He is the king. We are princes. Amen. Kings. Small K, hallelujah, amen. His status is ours. He's royal, we're royal, praise the Lord. He's an heir, you're an heir. Yes. Glory to God. He has authority, you have authority. Yes. 
All authority is given to me. He said, go ye therefore. Why? Because if I've got authority, you've got authority. Yes. Praise God. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. All the stuff that we, we say comes right out of the Bible. Why? Because that was what he did. He was showing his authority, yes. amen, on earth as a human being full of the Holy Spirit. And that's what God, he did before God as a man. We have the same power. That's why we lay hands on the sick and they recover. But we'll never do that based on our own initiative or our own ability. It has to be in our identification with who we are in Christ. He has empowered us, amen, with the fullness of the Godhead. Nothing shall be impossible to them who believe. Hallelujah. And that's what I'm talking about when we talk about revival, when we talk about what God wants to do, whatever God wants to do, He's going to have to do it through me. Hallelujah. He's going to have to use you, just like He did Jesus. Jesus came to bear the image of God before man because everybody had a screwed up image of God. Amen. So He comes, and in the flesh, He represents God. The beauty, the love, the grace, the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the compassion of God, to lay hands, see somebody sick. He went about healing all that were sick and infirm and oppressed of the devil. Hallelujah. Right. Praise the Lord. That's why he can tell us, go ye therefore. Why? Because you got the same thing. Yes. Come on. You just got to wake up. Jesus, the difference between Jesus and us, I'm talking about in his humanity, was he knew he saw himself in here. He found himself in here. We need to find ourselves in here and quit looking for some alien God and start seeing ourselves right here in this book. Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. He's righteous. You're righteous. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. And be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith. It's not even your faith that, gives, that makes you righteous. It was the faith of Christ. That's why I'm saying it. You don't need faith for everything. You just need faith in him. Right. Oh, R.W. Schambach used to always say, you don't need anything. You don't have any problem, friend. All you need is faith in God. Well, he was right. Praise the Lord. Whatever your situation, whatever your circumstance, don't worry about dealing with that. Focus on Jesus. Keep your faith in him. He will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Praise God. His nature in his humanity is your nature. Praise God. Is he powerful? Is, is he powerful? You're powerful. Praise God. Is he holy? Then you're holy. Praise God. Sanctified. Set apart to God. That's what holiness is. Yes. If he's holy, you're holy too. Yes. He can't be holy without you. You're one. Right. He can't be powerful without you because you're one. Yes. The question is, are we going to believe it the way Abraham yes. and Isaac and Jacob eventually believed it so they could begin to say the same things about their life that God had already said about them? Yes. God told Abraham who he was and what he was 20 years before Abraham ever really got the message. He was running about trying to establish his own righteousness or his own abilities, amen, even after God had declared him to be righteous. But eventually, he came to the place that said, you know, all this stuff that I'm doing, it just never quite comes out exactly like it should. Let me just believe God. And along comes Isaac, the promised. Amen? How else could you take that promised child and attempt to kill it? Because he believed God. Doesn't mean he, didn't, he wasn't in turmoil about it, but ultimately he said, if God said it, I'm going to do it. Somehow God's going to raise him up. Somehow God's going to do he, he He saw into the future of resurrection. Death wasn't the end. He knew that. And if I have to take this boy's life, Somehow God will raise him up because he's already promised. He, I'm the father of many nations. It's got to happen. Yeah. We, we give God timelines and we say, well, if he hasn't done so long, then maybe I better step up here and try to help him out. Yeah. God is not on a clock. No. He's outside of time. In fact, I said, with God, everything is now. It's always been now. We have revival now. Yeah. We just need to be aware of it. We just need to wake up to the reality of what God has said. 
It's happening. I'm telling you, it is happening whether we can see it naturally yet or not. God has put into motion through his plan, hallelujah, of our being one with Christ, amen, this whole process of what he's going to do to renew the earth, to, to, to bring the last time revival, the end time revival, if you will. Praise God. Somebody in the end time is going to have to have a revelation that somebody prior to this didn't have because God's not doing anything different. He isn't going to come in and just say, well, because you've been especially good, I'm going to let you have the revival. The revival comes when we become totally aware and, and, and confident in whom God has said we are. And we can do what God has said we can do. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. See, that's why we ought to be the happiest people. That's why we ought to be rejoicing. That's why, because the Lord directs the steps of the righteous. And he doesn't leave you, a, you know, the yellow brick road to follow. He just goes, that's the way you're going. I think I just made a right-hand turn. The truth is, God is directing my steps. Yes. There's no accidents for us. No. Amen? God has a divine, divine plan. And even when we deviate from it the way Abraham did by going off into Egypt, God still uses it to bless us. Yes, he Here's Abraham. He, he has been declared the righteousness of God. He goes down into Egypt, and, of course, the Pharaoh wants his wife because she's supposed to be beautiful and everything, and so he wants her. And Abraham says, take her, she's my sister. And he tells his wife, don't tell him you're my wife because he'll kill me. Tell him you're my sister. Now, how many of you know that could be not good for a marriage? <laughs> And it doesn't sound very honest. In fact, it sounds cowardly. But yet God, when, when, the, when God moved over the Pharaoh's house and, and, uh, and caused, uh, what's the word? Barrenness. Yeah, barrenness. Uh, so that none of the women could conceive, Pharaoh cries out to God. And God said, you know, I, I, I was ready to kill you. Kill me. I didn't do anything. He said it was his sister. And God said, you need to have my prophet pray for you. Yeah. My prophet, the guy who just pimped his wife, the guy who's, you know, off in the place he's not supposed to be anyhow, right? right? God still calls him his prophet and says, you need him to pray for him. And he prayed for him, and their, their wombs were open. Now, it sounds as if we got a, con you know, a contradiction here of some kind. But no, because God had declared him righteous, he was righteous Regardless of what his performance was, he was still righteous. He couldn't be anything but righteous because he believed God. Yes. Out of all that screw up, he comes out of there with his wife and all of his stuff. Yes. And the stuff of the pharaohs. Yes. He was so rich, he was the richest man, the Bible says, in the land. In fact, people wanted him to leave their territories. He was upsetting their economies. Uh -huh. Because he had so much money. He had so much wealth. Yes. Praise the Lord. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Hallelujah. Perfect. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 11. Hey, if you ever get to the place where you really believe you're perfect, now you may have to get a divorce in order to get substantiation there. Amen. People that know you really well will have a problem with that. But we're not looking through man's eyes, we're looking through God's eyes. And God has declared you perfect regardless of what your spouse says. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> Don't look at me with that. <laughs> well, go ahead, honey, because we are going home together. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. We know we're not perfect in the natural. But if we can ever get the revelation of our perfection in Christ, this is why this, this oneness with him is so critically important for the body of Christ. We've made it some, you know, that's a pretty little thing to say. No, it's, it's critical to our ever being able to do what the Bible says we are to do. Yes. Praise the Lord. If you can ever wake up one day and go, I am perfect. I am righteous. I am holy. I am powerful. I am everything Jesus is. If you ever get to that place, call me because I'm coming for prayer.
Hallelujah. And I'm bringing people with me because you will pray the prayer of a righteous man and it will avail much. Hallelujah. The reason our prayers don't avail what they should is because we don't really believe we're righteous. Therefore, we have no right to answer prayer. It has nothing to do with what we have a right to in terms of our own abilities. We have already read the scriptures. You are an heir, a joint heir with Jesus Christ. You have a right to all of the blessings, all of the power, all of the anointing of God. Sounds egotistical, sounds self-centered, but it's Bible. That's what changes, amen, this natural world that we live in. Praise God. Hallelujah. Until you see yourself sanctified, until you see yourself in Christ, nobody else is going to either. Praise the Lord. There's my liver transplant came through. Hallelujah. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Sorry, Eric. Just teasing. I do that to everybody. Do you understand what I'm saying? Until, until we see ourselves the way God sees us in Christ, you can't expect other people to see you that way. We become a mockery. We go around, you know, trying to be perfect, trying to look righteous. And it is hypocrisy. Because anybody that knows us, ourselves included, knows it's not true. Exactly. Less than what God has declared us to be. So we've got to take ourselves out of this equation the way God took Abraham out of the equation when he gave him his covenant. He put him to sleep. And God made the covenant with himself so that he couldn't screw it up. And it's exactly what happens for us. Amen. He made a covenant with himself in the person of Christ, in the human person of Jesus. Amen. And we had nothing to say about it. We just either believe it or we don't believe it. Right? Praise the Lord. He has perfected us in Christ. We have a covenant that cannot be broken because we weren't part of the covenant. We, we didn't enter into that covenant. He made a covenant with himself, a blood covenant. He spilled his blood. He gave his life, amen, so that we cannot foul this thing up. Right. You can't mess it up. If you believe, you're in. Amen. Praise God. But the problem most of us have had in the church is we've been content with being in, meaning we're escaping hell. <coughs> well, that's great if we all die the moment we get saved. The problem is we've got this life to deal with, amen, and generations following us, amen, that need to know the truth. Because this isn't about escaping here. It's about heaven coming into us, not about us going off to heaven. Because if you read your Bible, you'll find out we're not in heaven all that long before we're back here on earth again. Yeah, come on. Praise the Lord. And he's going to operate this earth, amen, perfectly, amen, by people who are connected or one with Christ. You ever wonder how you're going to do, how you're going to, how are you going to be Lord over many things? You know, if you've been faithful over a few, and some are going to be this, and we've had to hold our little stories. You know, so and so is a big name preacher. He'll probably be governor of New York. Amen. Uh, me, I may be moving trash cans, amen, in the alley down here on East Grand or something. You know, I mean, that's kind of the way we think about it. That's not how God sees it. This guy, the, the, the you know, the big name, whatever, has got no more credit with God than the lowest person on the planet. We all got the same way. We had to believe. Amen. So it's as likely for the nobody today to be ruler over much, amen, in the kingdom as it is the opposite. In fact, more likely, probably. Uh Praise the Lord. Amen. What you are is what Christ is in human nature to God. That's what you are. Ephesians chapter 1. Uh, verses 3 through 7. Ephesians 1, 3 through 7. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. Remember we were talking about that? That's where we are. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Otherwise, we couldn't be before him if we weren't holy, amen, if we weren't righteous and sinless, praise God. Having predestinated us under the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. 
to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. The beloved is Jesus. Accepted in Jesus. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 6. Thank you, Lord. He does all things well. Praise God. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. Everything important to your Christianity starts right there. Your position. Your acceptance. Your authority. Your power. Your holiness. Praise God. Until you can say, I am one with Christ, you'll turn your whole life into a sanctification process, which is miserable. I've been there. I was in the church, praise God. The bar is always being raised. You, you do all this stuff, and then you find out there's some other stuff, and some other stuff, and some other stuff, and it never ends. And your whole life is one of failure, getting back up, dusting yourself off, trying it again, failing again. That's why the... the the world is full of people who have been to church but just got so fed up with the whole mentality and atmosphere of failure, condemnation, guilt, shame, lack of power, lack of ability to do the things that the Bible tells. Why? Because we're reinforcing the wrong thing. Right. We're talking about the wrong thing. Right. Praise the Lord. Sanctification isn't about imitation. Sanctification is about habitation. He has made us holy, sanctified, separated. Yeah. Being one with Jesus, you can be absolutely nothing else. This isn't about, you know, what you're trying to do. It isn't about trying to be like Jesus, trying to act like Jesus. You'll never make it. You'll never get it. Hallelujah. He has imputed his righteousness to you just as he imputed your sin to him. Right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's habitation. It's recognizing your oneness with Jesus that's going to change everything, not only for you, for the church and for everybody outside the church that needs God. Hallelujah. That's all of them. That's everybody. Praise the Lord. They want revival. What do they want? They want the same thing we want. Amen. I, I'm, I'm just saying this morning, what we call revival, what we think of revival is a house full of people jumping and running and shouting and flipping out and, you know, that's all good. That's fine. But if you, I said, I said Wednesday night, here's, here's the deal. We, we, you know, if, if your neighbor's house is on fire and you know they're in there sound asleep and you see the flames shooting out of the roof, you'll run over there and beat the door down, you'd knock out windows, you'd scream, you'd, hot, you'd do whatever you had to do to wake them up and get them out, right? right. I mean, most of your neighbors. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> right? But what if it's hellfire and you go over there at 2 o'clock in the morning and start beating on the door to tell them about Jesus? Yeah. See, see one, one is a, uh, a hero. The other is a lunatic. Praise the Lord. One, you probably get a medal from the mayor. The other one, you'll get a restraining order from a judge. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm saying, we've got to be led by the Spirit. I mean, you know what I mean? Yes, we want them saved. Of course we want them saved. But there's a big difference between a house fire and hell fire. House fire is self-evident. It's there. All you've got to do is open your eyes. Hellfire takes faith, even for the people that are going there. Because if they had faith in hell, they'd have faith in God. Yes. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. This is something that only God can do, yes. but he'll do it through you. Yes. Hallelujah. But of him are ye in Christ who of God has made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Praise the Lord. See, it's only here on earth. It's only in this realm. Reality light, according to the Bible. We say this is real. He says that's real. 
this is just a reflection. It's, it's, just, it's all temporary. But it's only here in the land of reality light that you or anybody else could ever see you as anything but what God says you are. That's why the heavens aren't debating with God about me. God has declared me righteous. He's righteous. Heaven doesn't have an issue with this. It's only here where we see through a glass darkly. Where we only see a little, but not the whole thing. Because we're limited by our human understanding, our natural way of looking at things. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4 Beginning at verse 16, I'm, I want to read all the way down to verse 25, Roberto, so stay on scroll there. Mm -hmm. Romans 4, 16, beginning at verse 16. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed. Remember he said, all the seed. He's the father of many nations. Abraham's seed is going on. Praise the Lord. Therefore, it's a faith that it might be by grace to the end, that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Remember, Abraham was before the law. There wasn't any law when Abraham was here. Neither was there when Isaac, neither was there when Jacob was here. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which are be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the, the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now, it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. So you can, you, can, uh, you can be justified, you can be righteous, and according to that scripture, still not see the manifestation. The reason Abraham saw the manifestation was because he believed God. Amen. And he believed him for a long time. Now, again, I'm not saying his faith was perfect, but he always went back to the set point. Every time he'd deviate, every time he'd He'd question every time he would be tempted to not believe because every day he'd look in the mirror, see himself a little bit older. Amen. Look at Sarah. Nothing's changing. Every day. But there was also this constant reminder of what God had declared. Father of many nations. So he continued to believe God. And at some point, it manifested. Did Abraham Was Abraham doing anything differently on the day that he got the news that Sarah was pregnant than he had been doing for years before. He was a shepherd. He was, a, you know, the leader of this clan. Life required his attention. But one day, Sarah said, Honey, stork's coming, or a crane. Lord, we're going to have a baby. Praise the Lord. Why? Because he believed God. Yes. Miracles happen not because of us, because of him. I don't have to have faith in healing. I just need faith in Jesus, right. my healer. Yes. Amen. I don't need faith for prosperity. I just need faith in the one who yes. became poor so that I could become yes. rich. Yes. God's made it simple. He simplified it. Amen? So as a pastor, I'd rather, I'd rather have you struggle to believe God and act accordingly than struggle not to sin. Because God honors one and ignores the other. 
struggling to believe God, get your gold star. I mean, it, because it will motivate you. It will move you towards the promises of God and the reality of God. Struggling to try to quit sinning won't do you anything except keep you focused on you. And I, I promise you, no matter how good you are, if you become enough self-aware, self-conscious, you'll find flaws. Yeah. I, I find them in me. <laughs> you, have to, you have to really look and you have to really be focused, but it's there. Okay. But when I'm focused on Jesus and my oneness with him, this means nothing. It's irrelevant. Based on all these scriptures we're reading, focus on Christ and his power. Amen. 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. Just a couple more scriptures here and we'll wrap up. Uh, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God, anybody here born again? Born from above, born of God, amen, overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even your faith. Not your faith to overcome the world, but your faith in he who has already overcome, right? He said, Jesus came into this world, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He has overcome Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Win the fight of faith, and every other victory will fall in place. Amen. Praise God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. We're going to take this big list of all we have to do, and we're going to just put a 1 on it. Amen. Praise the Lord. In fact, we won't even put a 1, because that would in indicate that there might be some numbers to follow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, no numbers. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Your job is faith. Christ's job is living through you. It's not your job to live through Jesus. Your job is to trust and believe Jesus. His job is to live through you. If you believe him, he can live through you. Praise the Lord. How did Abraham, how was he able to have a child with a Woman whose womb is, by their definition, dead. Life came to that womb. God life. Miraculous life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Faithful, 1 Thessalonians 5 says, you don't have to go there, Roberto, I think verse 13 says, Faithful is he who has called you, who also will do it. You know, we've heard... Faithful is he who called you who will get you smart enough, get you trained well enough, get you dedicated enough, get you disciplined enough so that you can do it. No. He that called you is the one that's going to do it. Yes. He called you so he can do it through you. But it's him that's going to do it, not you. You just believe in the call and he will do it. Yes. It's that simple. Praise the Lord. Amen. Win the fight of faith. That's all you got to do. Stay Focused on faith in Christ. Yes. The stuff will take care of. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Yes. His righteousness. Yes. And all these other things get added. All the other stuff happens when we're focused on his righteousness. Not my righteousness. His righteousness yes. has been declared my righteousness. Yes. We're one. Amen? Amen. Last scripture. John 15, 5. Praise the Lord. He's the vine, we're the branches. Praise God. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me or stays in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. In him, all of the promises, all of the fruit, all of the, all of the realities of God's word become your reality. Not by what you do, but by where you habitate, by where you are. In Christ. Amen. Acknowledge it. Stay aware of it. It's just everyday faith in this simplest of truth. And that is the secret to every promise of God. The just shall live by faith. We've, we've called it all kinds of stuff. Everything and faith. Or faith and everything. It, 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 it's nothing but faith. And it's faith in him. And that simple reality, if you can just keep it simple, if you can just keep it focused on faith in him, 
everything else will be added. And that includes the world around us being saved. If, if you can do this, if you can stay focused on faith in him, the greatest revival you've ever heard about will be taking place in your own life. You understand what I'm saying? If we really believe that we are one with God, that his history is our history, his future, our future, his inheritance, our inheritance, his power, our power. If you stay focused on him, can you see how that would change everything in your life? You would be in the middle of the greatest revival that has ever taken place on this planet outside of Jesus himself when he became aware of who he was. And he went about It's not complicated. Religion complicates it. This is a relationship. And if we ever get to the place, keep feeding yourself with these truths. Amen. And one day, you'll hear that echo of Sarah. Honey, we're about to bear fruit. Praise the Lord. We're going to give birth to something supernatural here. And it's just because we believe. Nothing about us has changed just him. Yeah. He has declared in our lives. Right. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm telling you, in my lifetime, I'm not a young man. Well, this is all relative, isn't it? Praise the Lord. But I'm not as young as I used to be. But I plan on being here to see this. And I'm never going to see it if it doesn't start right here in me. And that's true for every one of us. The more the kingdom grows, the only way the kingdom can grow is this way. The more the kingdom grows, the more influence the kingdom has. The more influence the kingdom has, the more the kingdom grows. Yes. That's revival. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. And it's all about him. Can you give him a hand clap? Praise God. Yes. Thank the Lord. Amen, amen. So when you leave here, leave here in the power of his might. Yes. Praise the Lord. Stay focused. Start laying hands on everybody. Well, everybody that will let you. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Pray. Do, I mean, do what the scripture says we do and believe God and watch things change. And this young couple here, I would, I would admonish you, declare with your own mouth God's prosperity in your life. You, you start speaking it because it's your promise from God. Jesus is not poor and we are seated with him in heavenly places. You are as rich as rich can be. Amen. There is no lack for them who trust the Lord. That goes for all of us. Whatever it is that the enemy tries to come and tempt us with, sickness, age, whatever it is, we all got our stuff. And the enemy knows which button to push for each one of us. The focus has to be on him. Yes. Not on the situation, not on the thing, not on the this or the that, but on him. And watch his word come to pass in your life. It has to because that's the promise of God and he cannot lie. Amen. Give him one more hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen. God bless all of you. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Go out and enjoy your life in Jesus. Amen. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. God bless all of you.